Good evening. Thank you for such a warm welcome. What an incredible honor to have Governor Northam here with us. Governor, thank you for your kind remarks for making the trip up here. Uh, really appreciate it. And, you know, I am reminded that we like a lot of talent in Roanoke. And since you will get tired of governing one day, you can come to Roanoke. We've got a job for you. Imagine you're 15 years old. You're hiking with your Girl Scout troop. You trip. You slide down the side of a small mountain. A trip to the emergency room doesn't reveal any broken bones. But your doctor seems perplexed at something on the x-ray. Imagine you're 15 years old and you're diagnosed with a bone tumor in your knee. Your family's told that it's most likely cancer and that you most likely will require an amputation. Picture the five surgeries and two years in a wheelchair or crutches. And then finally, being able to walk play, and pray without assistance, all due to the doctors and nurses who cared for you. Well, I can picture that, as I was that 15-year-old. And while thankfully my health issues were not life-threatening, they were life-changing. Life-changing because it affirmed my desire to one day be like those caregivers who cared for me. The extraordinary care I received as a teenager did even more than help me walk again. It inspired me. It ignited a passion to care for people. The doctors and nurses who cared for me then inspired me and the work that caregivers do all across this country inspires me now. Inspires me to make a difference to the patients who put their trust in us. In my opinion, there's not much that's more important. Well, my official journey into healthcare began as a nurse and has led to becoming chair of the AHA in the stage today. I have to tell you, this investiture ceremony feels a bit like this is your life as I look out at at the audience and see so many of you who've had such a profound impact on my life and my career. One of those people is you, Jean, AHA's past chair, Jean Woods of Atrium Healthcare in North Carolina. Last year, Jean shared that going into healthcare was a total accident. And Jean, we're awfully glad you showed up at the wrong session on career day. (laughs) As our immediate past chair, you have been phenomenal. And this year has been a doozy. You led our field as we navigated the many iterations of repeal and replace. You led the field through a heartbreaking year of natural disasters and unspeakable violence. And you showed tremendous leadership to advance population health and improve health equity to truly move the needle in Charlotte in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and in hospitals and communities all across this country. And you know what, Jean? I'm especially happy to know you because you know when to say y'all and all (laughs) y'all. I join my fellow board members in thanking you for your passion and your courage and applaud the success of your chairmanship this year. Thank you, Jean.
and Rick Pollack, AHA's president and CEO. I've known Rick for at least two decades. Rick is a remarkably talented, savvy, and inspiring leader. When Rick says, let's get this done, it gets done. I don't know a greater champion for hospitals and health systems than you, Rick. And I know that you are such a champion for us, but that your type of leadership inspires us and your unraveled expertise are such tremendous assets to our organization and to this country. Rick, thank you. I look forward to working for, with you this year. Thank you. And to Brian. Brian Granulotti of Atlantic Health System, a colleague who challenges us on, well, everything. <laughs> a sounding board of reason, and a friend indeed. Brian will succeed me as chair of the AHA board. And to you, Brian, I promise to give my very best this year so that I can successfully pass on the heavy baton. I also want to thank my fellow AHA board members all around me, the leadership and the staff, you all mean the world to me, as you do to so many for whom we advocate. Thank you all. And finally, there are some very special people in my life who are here tonight. My almost sisters, Linda and Daff, my brothers, Rick and Gary, my precious son, Zach, and his beautiful wife, Christina, and my husband, Steve, who keeps me grounded and makes me laugh. I love you all. All of you here on this stage, in the audience, in Virginia, and all across this country matter to me. And it is my great honor to embark on this journey with you. I am humbled by the responsibility that you have entrusted in me, especially now, during a time when our field is going through such tremendous change. But I have to tell you as I stand here with you tonight, I am excited. I am optimistic. I see so many opportunities ahead for us. And it is with that optimism and excitement that I enter this year as your chair. We're gathered here in Washington, but in all corners of our country, hospitals and health systems are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Doctors and nurses are standing ready. Caregivers are giving compassionate care to patients and families. Lab technicians, therapists, environmental service employees, volunteers, operators, and so many more, all working together to make care safer and improve health. And they're all doing so with that same guiding passion to offer care and comfort, to be stewards of excellence, and to be champions for good health. Well, speaking of champions, I know quite a few superheroes, and a few of them are here tonight. My deep appreciation to the Krillian Clinic Board Chairman James Hartley, immediate past chair George Cartledge Jr., and all the members of the board and colleagues who dedicate their time and expertise to guide Carillion and serve our communities. And to all of the 13,000 plus heroes at home at Carillion who embody our values and make us strong, including our management team, some of whom are here tonight. 
I'd like to ask all of you, board and management, if you would stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you for your belief in me. Thank you for allowing me to serve you and our communities. And thank you for your dedication to health and health care. You know, I am so very privileged to serve as president and CEO of Carilion Clinic. It's an integrated health system headquartered in Roanoke, Virginia. We represent a microcosm of hospitals all across this country with a level one trauma center and major teaching hospital, average size community hospitals, and critical access hospitals. We serve a population of almost a million people in what some call urban Appalachia. 10 years ago, we partnered with Virginia Tech and began an allopathic medical school and research institute. I'm proud to say that just yesterday we graduated our fifth class from our School of Medicine, and our research institute has nearly $100 million in external funding, and it happened in just eight years. Our relationship with Virginia Tech is a great example of a successful public-private partnership, and I appreciate that the president of Virginia Tech and my good friend Tim Sands, and I can't see you in the audience, Tim, uh, but I know you're here. Would you please stand and be recognized? We are on a roll in Virginia. And I feel a similar sense of enthusiasm and excitement, a quest for innovation wherever I travel across the country. Sure. Our fields are changing, and there are challenges and obstacles aplenty. But we are smart, we are strong, and we care deeply about health care in America. As this meeting's theme suggests, redefining the age, our time is now. We are at a crossroads in the healthcare field and we must change, we must stretch ourselves. We need to transform, to improve, and to redefine how care is delivered, to find ways to deliver care that provides value and is affordable. Affordability is an unsolved issue. 46% of Americans say medical costs are a hardship. 23% don't fill prescriptions or cut their pills in half because of cost. One out of three Americans say that they put off needed health care because of cost. Something needs to change. We must consider our patients' ability to afford their care just as passionately as we do their ability to access care that is safe and of good quality. Now, I don't need to tell you that hospitals and health systems aren't the only stakeholders when it comes to affordability. And as such, we can't fix the issues on our own. But we can be a catalyst, promoting health care affordability, quality, and collaborating with consumers insurers, vendors, employers, elected officials, and yes, maybe drug companies, and certainly patients. Tonight, I am proud to share with you that the AHA is doing just that. We are leading with positive, proactive, aggressive strategies on affordability and value. Last year, the AHA board launched a special committee on health strategy and innovation. We took a hard look at the issues of affordability and identified strategies to address the total cost of care. We accomplished a lot, and the AHA will continue to build the advocacy agenda for affordability and value. 
and assure that the AHA is a true facilitator for transformation. Our effort is known as the Value Initiative. Guided by member feedback, we have four specific strategies. First, redesign the delivery system. From improving coordination of care to chronic care management, to more efficient ways to provide care to our patients, to interoperability, to eliminating waste. Second, we can improve quality and outcomes. Through advanced analytics and evidence-based care, hospitals and health systems can reduce clinical and operational variation. Care based on evidence is the best practice Let's get on with this. Third, develop strategies for risk management and payment reform, and advocate for less burdensome regulation. You know, regulation can punch the gut out of innovation. And fourth, we must find operational solutions to lower cost and improve effectiveness. This is ours to manage. Importantly, our commitment to excellence demands our continual focus on making care better and more affordable for our patients. They are the reason we are here and why we do what we do. And so, I'll end by telling you a story about a patient. I call her D. She planned well for retirement. She and her husband bought a home in Florida, they sold their house in Roanoke. They made frequent trips back and forth, made new friends in Florida, got involved in the community. But what's that saying? While you're busy making plans, God laughed. Two months before retirement, <coughs> Dee, a healthcare executive, an Army veteran, animal advocate, world traveler, wine enthusiast, a beauty inside and out, never a smoker, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer with metastasis to brain, spine, and liver. In the space of a year, she had multiple surgeries, immunotherapy, chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Sadly, she's now in hospice. Her plans for retirement evaporated. Her wide world shrunk to a room in a townhouse. Yet Dee's remained upbeat, remarkably positive, and joyously full of life. Visiting her is a pleasure as we pile on her bed and tell stories. And it's through her courage and bravery that she blesses her caregivers, her friends, and her family. D is why we do what we do, isn't she? And what Dee and thousands of other brave women and men who happen to be patients teach us is this. Life is precious, so live life well. Know that life can change in a moment. A life lived well isn't always easy, should not be taken for granted, and takes extraordinary courage. A life lived well makes all the difference. This is why we do what we do. We honor our brave patients with our works of courage, competency, and compassion. I heard a chaplain say once, I comfort the agitated and agitate the comfortable. Let's not get comfortable. Highly reliable quality care, access, and affordability represent a conundrum that won't be solved overnight or in the course of my term as chair. 
So I urge you, think of that patient that inspired you. Be reminded of who it was that inspired you to go into healthcare. We cannot sit on the sidelines as healthcare changes around us. We must lead for D and for all our patients. We must lead for our teams, our caregivers, our staff, those who demonstrate the care and compassion on the front lines every day. Together, with open ears and eyes and hearts, we will be the catalyst for change in a sector that is ripe for it. Together, we will meet our mission of advancing health care in America. Thank you for this great honor.